So I'm here in beautiful Bissendorf, Germany, right north of Hanover, and I'm here at the Sennheiser factory. This is where they make every Sennheiser and Neumann microphone in the world. They make them all right here, and we're going to do a tour of their facility, as well as an interview uh, with John from Sennheiser. I have a bunch of questions, some of which you asked, and we're gonna get to all that. And they also have a flagship store right there where you can buy microphones at a discount. I'm so excited. Let's get to it, guys. <laughs> all right, yeah, we're doing it. Okay. So ever since I first set foot in a recording studio, the unique qualities of microphones has always been an interest of mine. And this summer, I wanted to go where they make the best microphones. Yep, you guessed it. The best microphones are made in Germany. So after flying to Berlin and getting acquainted with the local culture, I took the Deutsche Bahn over to Hanover and a short taxi ride up to the quiet town of Bissendorf to visit the factory where every single Sennheiser and Neumann microphone is built. I wanted to know what goes into making a German microphone. And in this video, we'll talk about the differences that go into making a $300 Sennheiser mic and a $3,000 Neumann. Now, I was totally blown away by this experience. I got a lot more than I bargained for on the tour, including getting to stand in a real anechoic chamber. This is not our main chamber, but this is one of our sort of testing chambers that we use, which is why it's a bit battered around the edges. But yeah, this is a proper anechoic chamber from the 1950s. And of course, if you do the classic one, I recommend a you stand in that corner and face the corner, and then you stand in that corner and face that corner and try and talk to each other. See the volume drop you get. Get us. So weird. I wonder how many Dodge Marks and Euros are on the floor down there. <laughs> Probably a couple of thousand. I found the most remarkable area of Sennheiser production to be their evolution line, an affordable set of microphones suitable for the stage and studio that are priced to compete with another popular microphone company. You guys are cool if I don't mention them, right? I mean, it's like your video, so sure. While they're busy shooting their microphones with guns, Sennheiser is building their entire Evolution microphone line with machines. Their production line is fully automated and produces 3,000 high quality microphones a day with only two human supervisors. Yeah, well, that's not surprising when you consider that some of these pieces are a quarter the width of a human hair, like this mangled voice coil that I dragged back to Canada. I have no idea how you'd assemble this with my bratwurst fingers. So the machines allow for a smaller margin of error, a more consistent product, and they allow Sennheiser to bring the price down on these top quality German microphones to make them more affordable for musicians and engineers. Another thing that I found super interesting is that the capsules of these microphones are biased or EQ'd in a certain way to correct possible frequency masking issues right at the source. This makes getting a whole set of them ideal for the stage and the studio as the evolution mic curves fit together like puzzle pieces, which allows the user to more accurately experiment with mic placements due to a more natural sound that isn't so colored like other manufacturers. But what if I don't want a microphone that's made by a robot? Well, there are several mics that are produced with the help of humans and their true luxury brand is Neumann. Highly regarded around the world as the Cadillac, uh, BMW of microphones, these mics are used in just about every studio worth talking about. And every single one of them is assembled at one station on two tables by four women. Every Neumann microphone is 100% hand-built using the old school assembly line method and factory style labor. Everything from assembling the capsule, assembling the body, and even putting the little stickers on to tell you what kind of microphone it is. And speaking of which, they're actually color coded. Red for transformerless, like the TLM 103, green for dynamic, black for a tube mic like the U67, purple for a transistor with a transformer like the U87, and blue for a digital mic like the D01. That's a mic with no noise floor because it has no analog parts. Kind of freaky. Sennheiser and Neumann both see their product as a lifetime investment. It has to be good. Imagine saving up for your own U87 only to have it crap out after the first week. That's the philosophy of their company. Do the job right the first time. Build the best possible stuff 
even if the market isn't ready for it. Many of the products that were showcased in their flagship store are not priced for your average consumer market, as their reach goes much deeper than selling microphones to studios and headphones to DJs. Sennheiser has built and sold technology to aviation, broadcasting, government, military, and even done some personal commissions for celebrities such as Prince and Elon Musk. But more about that in the following videos. Sennheiser has put a ton of thought and care into their designs over the years, and I wanted to know what's next for them as a company and what they think about the copycats. So I was fortunate enough to grab a quick interview with our guide, John, and to ask him a few questions about the industry and how microphone design has changed. Let's check that out. A lot of people obsess over vintage mics. They they say vintage mics are, are better or, or superior in some way. Is there any truth to this or is it a myth? I would say from a technical standpoint, it's a myth. But then again, audio is not just technical. Audio is also artistic and audio is subjective to how we hear. From that point, I can't say it's a myth. Mm -hmm. It comes down to, it boils down to what you're listening to well, what you're trying to record, how you're trying to record it. Were the components different? Yes. Older components were not as good, and therefore they introduced different forms of harmonic distortion, which was what we call the warm sound, that second order harmonics. Yeah. Modern electronics are a lot better. However, they're a lot cleaner, and therefore they're a lot stricter, tighter, crunchier. Uh, and therefore, yeah, some people look at that sound and go, it's not as good. It is a purely subjective thing. Yeah. Uh, I know people, uh, m myself uh, as well, we, we used to make a series of digital Neumann microphones. Uh, we take the Neumann capsules, but going through a complete digital conversion right after the capsule, and they are unbelievably clean. When you put them up against the original analog version, people would sit there going, oh, we don't like these harsh sounding modern digital ones, but I utterly love them. Then again, of course, I do have friends who look at the analog one and goes, I want that warmth, I want that harmonics that add it into it. And it does just come down to a pure case of subjective reasoning of what is it you're trying to do. Absolutely. So when you make microphones here, the Neumanns as well as the Sennheisers, you think of microphones like the U87, the U67 that are like world renowned as some of the best microphones in the world. How do you innovate on that? Where, where do you go from there? Do you to keep it the same? Are you always looking to change on the design? We're always looking to change on the design as best we can to make the components uh, more robust, to make the microphone more robust. But when you look at things like the U67, which obviously we just re-released the other year, when you look at the U87, which is 52 years old now, the capsule design itself is nearing perfection. You're not gonna get much better than that. The main thing that we at Sennheiser now innovate on is different ways of recording, different ways of, of using those technologies to get different uh, applications out there. The actual physical technicality of the microphone itself, I think we're pretty much, there will still be some changes over time, but we're pretty much at the pinnacle of, of uh, design. And now I'm starting to see some experiments in modeled microphones, in microphones that are uh, one yes. that can, you know, put an EQ curve on. Is that a gimmick? Is that in any way comparable to a proper German microphone? It's a tough question to answer. Yeah. Um, yes and no is probably the right answer for that. Yes, it is a gimmick. To be able to go out and get a digitally modeled microphone uh, that is going to supposedly give you the same sonic characteristics as a physical in-your-hand microphone. I, it's close, yes, I will agree on that. There are, some microphone, there are some microphone characteristics that are very close, but to actually have that physical microphone in your hand to be able to play with it and work with it in positioning and things like that, that's where the real art comes down. Being able to trans translate this somehow from a generic capsule into a sound, you're still gonna miss some things. Mm -hmm. You've also got to remember, as, as microphones get older as well, their characteristics change. So there are people out there who have 50-year-old U87. A layer of dust on yeah. them. And what, yeah. They've got their 50-year-old U87 and they go, it, 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 it sounds better than my new one, or it sounds better than when I got it when I was new, because supposedly it's been broken in, which is another myth. You can't break in a microphone, it just is. But yeah, there is something that's changed, the characteristics change. The, the electronics have gotten a bit older and a bit crankier and it gives you that unique sound. I think to have a generic capsule that does this digital remodeling, 
No, it's not going to be as good as having mm -hmm. your solid mm -hmm. German microphone yes. in front of you. In the next video, I'll share everything that I've learned about their company, their journey, and the innovations that they've contributed to the world of sound engineering and design. So thank you so much for watching and all the continued support. We hit 7,500 subs while I was away. I really appreciate all the ongoing support. I'm really excited to get more content up and to start doing more regular releases. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.